In May 2018, I decided it was time to construct another car. I already had a garage full of interesting cars. I decided it was time to build something smaller, lighter and slower. I had fond memories of the Austin 7 that we had at college in the early 1960s. The car you see here is a 1934 box saloon which we purchased for the princely sum of £10. It provided us with reliable transport for a few years, taking Jackie to teaching practice just outside Cambridge. As with many of my cars, the urge to modify it took over and the final car was inspired by watching the Mick Forest lowered Austin 7 racing at Snetterton and we soon set about modifying our poor little car. We welded the front section of a Triumph Herald chassis onto the original Austin 7 chassis. This included the disc brakes and rack and pinion steering. We then lowered the roof by 6 inches and widened the wings by 10 inches. The engine was an 1100 A-series engine fitted with twin SU carburetors and a Morris 1000 rear axle was located with trailing arms and coilover shock absorbers. We used the car for autocross events and production car trials. This photo was taken on the Blue John's Mines section of the Land's End trial. Now fast forward around 30 years and I acquire bits on another Austin 7. This was a long wheelbase 1934 chassis. This is what I started with. A chassis, an engine, a gearbox, rear axle, a set of wheels and a radiator cowl. All untried and in a fairly rough state. This shows the Austin 7 chassis with the steering and the handbrake mounted on. Um, an awful lot of work to do. Rear brakes overhauled and working reasonably well. Chassis strengthened underneath with some plating and painted and we're on to the major work on the rest of the car. This is my current project. It's a 1934 Austin 7 chassis which I got in a terrible state from somewhere down south. Um, I've done quite a lot of work on it already, um, getting the, the brakes parts to put to work properly. Um, the brakes aren't on it yet, but they will be. Um, the back axle is on, as you see there. Um, the wheels and the tyres, the wheels have been sprayed. Uh, and I've got bits and pieces like a front, um, front cowl for it, which has got to be repaired. It's in a bit of a mess. There's a prop shaft, various stub axle bits are made. The, the axle beam is this here. That, that's been formed um, with a bow in it to give a lower front suspension. That was quite a game. There's a lot of work to do on the front suspension. Try a bit of gentle persuasion with this hammer. Should come off. There we are. There we are. And that's the um, flywheel and clutch come off. Obviously the flywheel wasn't bolted on, otherwise you wouldn't be able to do that. Um, I'll now take this apart and I'll do some video of that to show you how it works. I'm now trying to measure the distance, how much clearance I've got between the th clutch thrust race and the um, levers that do the uh, release the clutch. See that the head of the screwdriver is in between the thrust race and the little levers. Well, I'll now show you putting an Austin 7 clutch together. These plates would actually be riveted in normally, um, but as we're uh, going to try some settings, that's the plate, there's the other lining, then uh, we need your clutch levers, release levers. Then we put the springs in position. Right, those are in position. You've then got to lower the the next plate into position which is not that easy. Here we go. That's number two. That's number one. Two and one. 
two, one. Little bits of tipex which um, tell me which way the thing went together. So if we let now these are screwed into the base plate underneath. Small five sixteenths quarter beer quarter beer SF tapped holes. And they're in. They're in. That one's not quite in. And then all you do to tighten the clutch up, make sure these are pointing the right way, is tighten these bottom nuts down, the lower nuts. This compresses the spring. Once you've done that, you can see the levers beginning to drop as I do this. See all the levers have now dropped down. The springs are compressed. You've now got to line up this up with the right part on the flywheel, which should be not. There we are. And then the holes will line up. There. Put the main that hold the clutch together in. Then you tighten these down and release these and the clutch is then ready to go in the car. It's in gear now, which means I can't turn the back shaft. If I press the clutch down really hard, it actually turns. As soon as I, it's locked as soon as I take the clutch out. So that's working correctly. But I've got to get the holes into pieces again because the clutch isn't finished. Um, so I've got to take it all apart and measure it. Uh, but there's a bit of progress there. Well, that clutch assembly went reasonably well, and it works. Um, so now we're going to move on to the front suspension, doing the kingpins, uh, which is a bit of a game because they have to be reamed in line. This piece here is the <clears throat> main um, stub axle assembly for the Austin 7. Now you'll see in here some brass bushes. These wear, and in this case I've knocked the old ones out, well they were extremely hard to get out, and pushed new ones in. Unfortunately, the new ones are undersized, so the kingpin, which is this thing here, hardened, won't fit in. This, these will fit, because I've reamed them. The, the process of reaming, as I shall show you, you use something like this. This is a, an adjustable reamer. The blades are on a taper, so if you screw this up and down here, it alters the rise size of the reamer. The modification I've done to it is to put a tail on it here. This, this um, long steel bit, which I turned on the lathe, extends it. And this means that when you put it into the... to ream it, the, the kingpin bushes, it lines the two up. So they can't go out of line. Then you start reaming, going through like that, and it takes the excess material out. Without one of these, the reamer can go at odd angles, and then you can't get, well, you get the, the ream, reamed hole in the top bush out of line with the bottom bush. And there the kingpin won't, obviously won't go in. But this is, um, this is quite a nice fit. The uh, small hole in the kingpin goes at the bottom, and that just, and that's that's a nice fit. It doesn't fall through, but it's free to rotate. So that's then a, a ready to be assembled onto the the axle. Um, I've got some. You put a thrust washer in here and a, and a, some shims to adjust the play up and down. But that's ready to go on. The grease nipples need to be tightened up and so on. Well, here we've 
we've got a little more progress. We've got the front beam axle on the car, uh, mounted on the king pins, which we reamed earlier on. Uh, we've got the track rod in. Um, it's starting to look a bit more like the front end of a car now. The wheels are on the car now, the engine's in, the gearbox is in. Um, the steering is on, but I don't think it's at the correct length. That's got to be modified later on. You'll notice that the radiator is brass coloured. That's because I've had to strip all the chrome off. It's going to go away for chrome plating, and there's a big story attached to that as well, but it was quite successful in the end. This shows the friction shock absorbers at the front of the car. I used a pair of them, but I've linked them in a way that they're actually acting as a panard rod and stabilising the front axle. Oh, well, that's the idea. It may work, it may not. I chose the Austin Speedy as a uh, body shape for my car uh, for three reasons. Firstly, it has deep sills. That's meant that I could build the rigidity into the body with the aluminium sheet. Secondly, there's a speedy on at Goodwood Museum, which you had permission to photograph and measure. Thirdly, the plans for the original drawings are still available. I made a scale model from paper and balsa wood to get an idea of what I would be doing. Not very elegant, but uh, I hope that I could make the uh, aluminium body a little more elegant than the paper and card one. The position of the masking tape on the floor underneath the car is true to size, taken from the original plans, and shows the original position of all the major parts of the car, axles, bulkheads, front and rear pr profiles. By measuring vertically from the floor, the heights of the seats, the radiator, the high scuttle height, the body profile, the steering column rake, can all be planned quite accurately using the plan. I now had an idea of the shape of the car I wanted to achieve, so I decided to make a frame out of 16mm square tube. It's easy to form, weld, and it was bolted to the Austin 7 chassis with eight M12 bolts. By using cardboard and thin aluminium, I was able to see how the body shape would be possible in aluminium. By using thicker aluminium for the side panels, I was able to build more rigidity into the shell. I also was able to check the fit for the fuel tank and spare wheel. The radiator grill had now been returned from chrome plating and looked excellent. I'm sitting in the car looking very pleased with the finished result. I'd already decided the car would be blue, as are most of my cars. Uh, it was a suitable colour for the age of the car. Before starting the main body panels, I had to work out and design the fuel tank, the dashboard, the transmission tunnel and other various bits and pieces on the body. I was going to attempt to extract more power from the tiny Austin 7 engine. I'd already installed a slightly different camshaft and an upgraded oil pump and angled the oil jets to get a better oil flow into the crankshaft. A 1937 ruby cylinder head with slightly higher compression ratio was fitted and I constructed a tubular exhaust manifold and inlet manifold using a rather clever jig supplied by one of my friends in the Dirty Fingernails Club. I designed a small fuel tank around about three and a half to four litre capacity uh, which fitted neatly behind the seats.
Now I was confident that the mechanical parts of the car were actually working okay, I continued to work on the shell. Many hours of beating, annealing, wheeling, and welding followed, and the final shape began to emerge.